Welcome to another video. Sometimes the problem is not the problem. The problem is how you solve the problem. You know, the first time I saw this 2008 Finland Algebra Olympiad problem, I went, this is too easy. So I began to remove, I began to square both sides and square both sides. But every time I noticed that whatever weird substitution I did, I only got one answer. I couldn't get the other one. So I decided to stop squaring both sides and I decided to do something different. And something different was actually more beautiful than the usual. Let's get into the video. Our mission is to find X. But X is hiding inside two square root signs. And there's another X, and there's another X, and there's another one here. Well, it's the same X. But in order not to have so many X's scattered around, I decided to say, okay, you know this little guy here? Let's just replace it with a letter. So I don't want to be squaring both sides. I want to see what it looks like. So this is what I did. I said, let T be equal to the square root of x plus 1. And what does that mean? This means that t squared is x plus 1. And what does that mean again? It also means that t squared minus 1 is equal to x. So what I did, I went back to the question and did all the replacements. So let's go here. What we have on the left hand side is going to be the square root of 17 plus, instead of writing x, I'm going to write t squared minus 1. And instead of writing minus 8, I'm going to write minus 8t, because t is this. So I got the right, I got this side, and then the other one is going to be 5 plus, this is t squared minus 1, and here I have minus 4t. Okay. Ultimately, I got 6. So, how is this different? Well, I can see, if only you can see also, this question was designed actually to be solved this way, the way I see it. Okay, so look, if we clean this up, this is the square root of t squared minus 8t plus 16 plus the square root of t squared minus 4t plus 4 equals 6. This here is a perfect square. This here is a perfect square. If you see it, look, what I have here is the square root of t minus 4 squared plus the square root of t minus 2 squared equals 6. I didn't know that was what was going on, but as I tried doing my substitutions, I discovered this. And this is beautiful because I can take the square root of what we have here, right? So if I take the square root of this, what do I have? The square root of a square is the absolute value of the root, which is t minus 4 is what I have plus the absolute value of t minus 2, and that's equal to 6. This is one of those problems that emphasizes that the square root of a square is not just the positive, just the root. It is always the absolute value. That's important, okay? So, and you can see it here. How would you solve this? So assuming all of this is gone, and this is the question you got, how would you solve this? Well, there are two ways. It's either you write your um, writes as a piecewise function, and then you look at all the cases, or you just go straight here and look at all the cases. So I'm just going to do cases here, okay? Case one. Case one. In case one, I'm going to treat this as positive and treat this as positive, okay? So both positive. I'm going to say t minus 4 plus t minus 2 equals 6. What does that give me? 
t minus 4 plus, so that's going to be, this implies 2t minus 6. Oh, when this goes here, it becomes is equal to 12. So that t equals 6 is an answer. Okay, I got one solution. Now, the second option I'm going to try is both of them are negative. Okay, by definition of absolute value, that's what's inside. So if this is negative, then we can write this as 4 minus t or negative t minus 4, which is going to be negative t plus 4, which is 4 minus t. And then this is going to be plus. If this is negative, it's going to be 2 minus t. Okay, and it's going to be 6 also, which implies if you put these two together, you get negative 2t equals, you move these two here, it's going to be 0. So that means t is equal to 0. Okay, so I've got two answers. Let's look at, um, oh, this is case 2. Case 2. Ah, come on. Then you have case 3. Case 3 is one is positive, the other is negative. So let's keep this positive. We have t minus 4 plus, this is now negative, 2 minus t equals 6. What does that mean? Well, this is t minus t. So we're saying that negative 2 equal to 6. That's not true, okay? Um, invalid. And we check the other case, case 4. If we switch it, I think we're going to get the same problem. We have um, 4 minus t plus t minus 2 equals 6 implies we don't have that right too, because this t is going to cancel this t, and you'll be getting 2 equals 6. That's not true. So the only two valid cases, um, this is an alternative way, is to say that both of them are positive, or both of them are negative, and we get t equals 6 and t equals 0. But remember, the mission is to find x, right? So we've gotten just two answers. I don't see any other way of getting another answer. And by that, we can go back here and say that what was x? x is t squared minus 1. So x equals t squared minus 1, which implies x is equal to 6 squared minus 1, which is 35, or x equals 0 squared minus 1, which is minus 1. And those are the two answers to this equation. Ta-da-da! <laughs> okay, so um, just leave your comment in the comment section. Tell me if you did the continuous um, squaring and simplifi simplifying and see if your method is more precise, more accurate. I actually tried that before. I made too many mistakes and I said, I got to keep looking for another way. And I found this way and this way is actually cool. And I'm very happy about that. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, Get it in the link in the description. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.